much for another Sabbath. We pray, O oh gracious God, that we will be able to glean what you have for us this day. We ask for our daily bread that we may continue, O oh God, to walk with you. And Father, we pray that we will recognize and know the kingdom, that we will be able to walk in it, O oh gracious God, to do those things that you really want us to do. And so, gracious Lord, we pray for those that are here, those that are on the way, and we ask, O oh gracious God, that you would teach us by your spirit that we will be able, O oh God, to walk in such a way in your spirit until everybody who here would be enlightened and that we will be more like Yeshua and to be able to see what the Apostle Paul did with his wonderful teaching that he got from him. And so, Lord, we pray that we will be able to bear our cross to be able to walk with you day after day. Lord, we pray these things in the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. If you all agree, say amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We left off at uh, chapter 15 and verse 16. <clears throat> So we want to be able to uh, look at that and to see what the Lord is saying to us. And I, I pray that uh, we will understand the ministry in which he gave to the Apostle Paul as he taught them, uh, as he taught him. And uh, if we can walk in it, we are going to see a lot of results. But, of course, we also know that uh, the Apostle Paul was a busy man. He worked day and night. Did I pray you all hear that because a lot of times <clears throat> we read the scriptures, we study the scriptures, but we uh, do that to talk about it, but we don't do that to move in it. Come on, somebody. And so what we're going to have to do to get the results, we're going to have to move in that. Okay? Um, so let us read the first verse, and then we'll uh, uh, see what the Lord has to say. As we look at Romans 15, 16, it says that I should be a minister of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> to the Gentile, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now you notice they, they were looking also for sanctification. They wanted to be sanctioned by God to do this work. And, of course, this is what uh, the Apostle Paul is writing so that we can see that. <clears throat> because, and I'll say it this way, from the time of Yeshua teaching his disciples how to walk in this thing, what kind of ministry did he have? He had a ministry of show and tell, not just tell. He actually took them from one place to another. And sometime they would be in the, out in the wilderness, sometime they would be in the city. Sometime they were from house to house. But all the time that he was teaching them or ministering to them, he made sure that he demonstrated 
the fact that the Holy Spirit was there to help them to be active. Come on, somebody. First thing about us today, we're not going anywhere. And what did Mark 16 say about that? These signs shall what? Follow them that believe. And we're not going anywhere, so signs don't even wake up <laughs> to help us do anything because we are not doing what? Anything. Now, I believe that if we could wake up a church that would be active and just follow the scripture as it is told, as we can read it and study it and get an understanding, I believe that God would sanction them everywhere they go. Whatever they say pertaining to him, I believe God would do something. But the problem is, we say we hear, but we don't understand here in the culture of Hebrew mean here is to do. Hey, did y'all hear that? Here means to do. Here is not just to hear sound like we do today. The church is full of sounds. Whoever is in the pulpit can get in the pulpit and begin to make some sounds. And de depending on the way he makes the sounds, we get all excited sitting in the pew. But that's as far as it goes. And we say amen, and then we get up and go home or go to go to Corral. Come on now. But we are not actually leaving here and going to the house across the street or the house down the street. I mean, this, this is the way it is. <clears throat> and then we wonder what is wrong. There's nothing wrong with the, uh, the way that the Lord taught. The way that the Lord taught that was the word, and the word works when you work it. Come on, somebody. But we have so made it so till we stand in the pulpit, we talk about it, we sit in the pew, we listen and say amen, and that's the end of it. But the apostle Paul, if you read about his life, he was shipwrecked, he suffered, he did some of everything. They left him for dead. Come on now. All you got to do is read about his life. He was out there where those who didn't like what he was doing would buffet him. We go through no persecution because we are not bearing the cross. Are you all hearing that? And because we are not bearing the cross, what we are getting, we are not passing it on. And then we think that we are going to bear fruit? No way. Look at the churches today. A lot of them are just losing people time and time and time again because they are not doing the work. You don't lose your job, do you? You know why? Because you go to work every day. <laughs> oh, Y'all ain't talking to me. Amen? You don't, you, don't, you don't lose your job. When it's time to hit that clock, you are there. Why? Because you, they, you, you trust the man that he's going to pay you at the end of the week or the end of the month or whatever it is. Huh? So you keep coming back, keep coming back. That's the way we need to do it in Christ. So you say, well, how can I go to work and, and, and do this and do that? You got more hours in the day than just eight hours. It's 24 hours in a day. 
and then we wonder what is going on. And so we are going to have to understand that to hear is to what? Do. That's right. And so we learned that long time ago, many years ago, just to understand the culture and the words in Hebrew. Amen? And so it's, it's very important that we take a hold of the ministry of uh, the Apostle Paul because he was not playing. He gave his total life to the Lord once he found out the right direction. Amen? All right. <clears throat> I wish you would uh, give us uh, some of the commentary on uh, 1516, please. Paul made no apology. Yeah. For he knew God had called him to minister to the Gentiles. Yes. God's chosen man is great in office. Yes. He is the minister of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. The true preacher's office is the greatest in the world. Did y'all hear that? And even if you are not an ordained minister, <clears throat> you are still carrying the word. That's another thing. We need to carry the word. This is so important. Amen? All right. Uh, go further, please. The true preacher's office is the greatest in the world. Yes. He does priestly work, offering up the gospel mm -hmm. as his sacrifice, as he stands between time and eternity. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. He is a sacrifice between, he stands between time and eternity eternity the problem again with us is that as we come to the Lord a lot of us who have the time will not do anything in our lives other than what we see other people do If we are single, do we try to act like the married people do? The Apostle Paul was what? Single. And what did he do? He gave his life totally to the, to the Lord. And then he began to move in that. The Lord began to direct him. And he began to work the word of God day after day. So we haven't made the Lord really first in our lives. So you said, man, that's a hard thing. The Lord gives you fulfillment wherever you are when you're in him. Come on. Amen. See, this is... This is so important, and even if you are married, then the two of you are supposed to give your life, lives to the Lord. Amen. See, this is the key. But we make everything a priority than the Lord. I know I ain't getting a whole lot of amens now because that ain't the way the church operate, you know? The church operate based on what they got. First thing, we have an agenda. We want to set the course for how we gonna run the ministry. We don't do like the Apostle Paul. He went to Arabia, <clears throat> went to himself, called on the name of the Lord, Come on now, and the Lord gave him direction. No, we don't have time for that. We, he didn't do anything until he, he first got in touch with the Lord and found out the correct way to carry the gospel. Come on now. See, we think that all I got to do is
do a little something, you know, and that we call it church. And we think that we are the church. No, look at Paul's life. Look at the disciples who followed the Lord and then match it with your life and see something about what is going on. <clears throat> the church is not uh, gaining like it ought to gain. In fact, we are based on the few people that uh, the Lord had after he left and told them, go ye into all the world, you know, and, and preach and teach, you know. Based on that, as much of the churches, we ought to have the whole world saved by now. The whole, whole world ought to be saved. If we count the numbers, you know what I'm saying? Look at the job the Apostle Paul did. And he said uh, in his writings that he didn't want to go to the same place that the Lord had been because he would be building on another man's foundation. Come on now. But what happened was that he continued to go and he wanted to go to new places. And we find him going to Rome. Amen? Uh, but he was, he was destined to go, but he didn't go according to his own wishes. He stayed where he had to stay, went where he had to go, until he was released to go. Come on, somebody. How many know... The Lord know how to minister better than we know. He know where there are hearts ready for the Lord. But the problem, listen, we are so busy trying to have all the fineries of this natural life until we, we say we are spiritual people, but we are not really looking for the Spirit to talk to us, the Spirit of God to talk to us. It's only when we uh, get on our knees, you know, and take some time out. But this is something that we are going to have to face. And we are going to have to realize that the Lord knows exactly where we must go, what we must say, what we must do for any individual. And it's amazing how the Lord works. He, uh, some people, some ministers like yourself, would, would turn around and say, well, what do I do here? How much time have you spent with the Lord to get his direction? Once we find the Lord's direction, it's going to work. Because he will not give you a blank. But we don't trust the Lord. Sometime I would say to the staff, hey, let us pray. Don't do anything right now, just pray. Let us hear the voice of God. Well, a few of us will pray. You see? But are we listening to really hear what is our direction? See, this is the key, folks. We got to stop trying to do organization work in the church when it's a living organism. Come on. Amen. I know you hear what I'm saying, preacher. I know, I know. Because that's the key. The key is not us learning in the world what to do with the church, how to run an organization. That, that's, not, that's not what it is. Our secular work 
and our secular uh, management out in the world, that, that's not the way to run the church. Are you all hearing this? And so we are going to have to understand that there's a great difference. Amen? Let us go a little further and see what it is saying in that uh, commentary, please. Many offer up people as a sacrifice on the altar of Mammon. Yeah. But Paul was a minister of the gospel, acting as a priest of God's good news, in order that the Gentiles, when offered, might be acceptable sacrifice. Okay. So you notice it's talking about many offer up people uh, as a sacrifice on the altar of mammon. We want to make some money. So we set ourselves to do what? Make some money. We go to school so we can do what? Make some money. That's the reason why we, we want to get education. That's the reason why we want a, a degree of some kind, to make some money. But do you know God got more wisdom than you can study in this world? Amen. See, the key to this thing is God. He made the world. He made us. He knows how to run the world. And the best way to run the world is like the Garden of Eden and don't fail like Adam did. Adam and Eve. See, the problem with us is that we are not hearing the real thing. Yes, there's a lot of, the Bible said there's a lot of voices in the world, but, and none of them is without signification. That's what the Bible says. So the voices that you hear is not what you're supposed to be following. How do you know it's the voice of God? How do you know it's uh, 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 some other voice? The church has never really gotten down to teach, even our young, how to hear the voice of God. We haven't done it right here. We've tried. I've given them notebooks. I've, I've given them. And no, I, nobody has bought me a notebook and said, here's something that I've heard. Gave them notebooks, pencils. Come on now so they can spend some time to hear the voice of God. And not necessarily an audible voice, but a thought that comes to you. That thought, is it of God or is it of man? Or was it something that you desired in your heart rather than desiring to do the work of God? So you say, well, how did Paul make it? He was making what? You are making tents, y'all remember that? The Bible said tents, well, this is what you call a tent, amen? And you throw it over, you know, get in your secret closet, amen? Throw it over your head so people can't see what your lips are saying. Hopefully you're not talking out too loud. <laughs> Amen. But this is the kind of thing. Now, I look at my brother here. He with, thank you for being with us today. Uh, it's been a long time uh, since he's been with us. But look at him. He's up there in New York doing some things. Amen. But you're not sitting still, are you? All right. You, 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 you. You took a hold of what was taught, and you went. Amen? And you got in the ministry. 
and, and continue to, to work. And we got so many people like this, but they are out there working and look like the people here are not working like those that have gone. See? It is, see, when you go somewhere, you ought to have it in your heart. I'm going to do the will of God. Come on, somebody. See, that, that's, that's a very key. And uh, so this is where the problem is with all of us. Amen? And we have got to understand that it's not just me standing in the pulpit that that's not going to get the people here. Come on now. Praise God. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so this, this thing is, is great. You, you, you see what I'm saying? We're going to have to realize that this thing is, this is a serious matter. Souls are at stake. It's not just how I'm faring with my little uh, two or three children or four children. That, that's, not, that's not what it is. Not just my family. I wasn't saved just for my family. Right. Hey, I'm, I'm glad I got an amen now. Hallelujah. See? Listen. We have got to get a hold of this thing. It only going to work the way Christ set it up. It's not going to work the way we think. You got people in the church thinking of great ways, they think, to, to run the church. God didn't tell you to do that. The, the way is already laid out. What did he say out of his own mouth? I am the what? Now, can you outdo him? No. And then we wonder what is wrong. And we get in the church and we are grumbling at each other when we ought to be rejoicing, saying, look at what the Lord has done. And look at this, look at all the fruit. That's what we ought to be saying. It is so amazing. And then we look at each other, think something wrong. I think something wrong with you. You think something wrong with me. Uh-uh. <clears throat> it's nothing wrong with the plan. It's the man. Oh, brother, I'm going to tell you, if we could ever get this thing straight, we could change Petersburg in a heartbeat. It's no question about it, because everybody got a friend somewhere. And if you want the best for your friends, those friends want the best for their friends. Come on now. And so we are going to have to understand these things and I, this is the reason why I don't want to rush through this book of Romans. It's too much here to put us on the right course. But we've got to see what the Apostle Paul is saying according to the Spirit of God. Amen? All right, would you take us a little further please? This offering of the Gentiles was consecrated and made holy by the Holy Spirit. No doubt some maintain, I'm sorry, no doubt some maintain that the Gentiles were unclean because they were not circumcised. Uh -huh. To such Paul's reply was that they were clean because they were sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Did y'all hear that? Humanly, they were saying that what? <clears throat> the Gentiles are not clean. And they saw what was happening to the Gentiles. But just to show you where our minds are, 
you're trying to find some physical thing, the reason why the Gentiles are not clean. So you're going you're gonna to make it so the way your mind is. But Paul, being in the spirit, he's able to see further than the natural. So Paul's saying, if the Holy Spirit has sanctioned them, who can say that they are not anointed? And sometimes we don't pay attention to what we're reading, or we think we do. Because that's what we do mostly, we read it. We are really not studying it. We are really not trying to get the essence out of it. The thing we are trying to do is to make work what's on our heart and on our mind. <clears throat> and we think it is something wrong with the church. No. No. Something is wrong with us because God would not give us a plan unless it actually works. And so we are going to have to uh, get a hold of this thing and understand that if I walk the way he wants me to walk, that I'm going to gain some fruit. So when he returns, my tree will still be growing. But if the tree is barren, it might not grow and get a chance to grow any more fruit because he might curse it. No, you don't want them to curse the tree. Are you, are you? Come on, somebody. That's what it says in the word. When the tree was not bearing fruit, he did what? He cursed it and said, no fruit will grow on you from now on. It's taking up space. We got a lot of trees in the church, but what are they doing? See, we don't want to actually face the truth. And a lot of this got to do with the fact that we don't understand the ministry from the cross on up. We got to realize that if we were to bear our cross, it's no way that God is going to let you go through all of that and not give you some fruit. The church really doesn't want the truth. They want to come in here looking good, smelling good and we want to be able to converse with one another and the reason why we are not <clears throat> really joyful in the church is because the joy comes out of seeing souls of being fruitful seeing souls come to the Lord that's where the joy really is and so we find everything to talk about other than the real joy. If we don't work the word, ain't no way you're going to have fruit. No way. And so we watch the church just go on and on and on. After a while, they say, well, I reckon we better shut the doors and ain't nobody else here. And then we try to put it on the preacher's fault. We try to put it on this one's fault. We try to put it, it's there for it, it's there. 
See, if everybody was working, ain't nobody got no faults. But as long as we find and fault with one another, it is because you're doing what you want to do, you're not doing what God said do. I know it's not pleasant to talk like this, but it, we, 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 we've got to understand that this is a working way. This is not pew sitting. This is a real key for all of us. I reckon somebody would uh, throw something at the radio or television, you know, when they hear some of this message. But it's, it's the truth, folks. It's the truth. We have got to learn. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, how many know a king has a kingdom? A king is not uh, how can he be a king over who if he doesn't have some subjects to rule over? No one wants a family and don't have anybody in the family that they can take care of. How can you do that? No one is satisfied like that. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so we are going to have to understand uh, very truly exactly what we are supposed to do. And do that which the Lord has shown us. Would you go a little further, please? Uh, we go to the... Uh, let us go to the next verse, please. Uh, number 17. All right, Romans 15, 17. It says, I have therefore uh, whereof I may glory through who? Jesus. Jesus Christ in those things which pertaineth to God. What you going to glory in? The things that what? The things that pertaining to God. That's where we, that's where it is, folks. It's not in what we think. Not in what we want to do. That's, that's not it. We get together and we have church meetings. We have all these kind of things. And we begin to talk to each other. And we begin to <clears throat> have all kinds of ideas. And they sound real good. Sounds logical. But is it spiritual? Come on, somebody. Oh, logic. Oh, oh yes. I'm a great philosopher. <laughs> I, I, I can talk some stuff. Come on. And then you use all kinds of word to, words to excite people show that you've been to school, but what are you getting out of it? Anytime we don't work the plane of God, we're in trouble. Yes, <clears throat> we, we are deep in trouble. <clears throat> and so we are going to have to be able to understand that once we start doing the things of the Lord, we are going to see a great harvest. A great harvest. If, 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 if we want to see a harvest, all we got to do is obey him. Because 
That's the key. Amen? And so I'm, you know, I'm so thankful. Uh, uh, we think it's something wrong with everything else but us. Oh, well, well. <clears throat> and then we look at another fellowship that's striving. And they are gaining fruit. And we say, oh, I see. Uh, let, let's, let's go over here and find out how they're doing it. But, but what's wrong with Christ? Uh, I wish somebody would help me out. If you are not gaining in the fruit, well, show me. Yes, show me, tell me. Come on now. But this is how the church get to the point they can't do each other any good anymore <clears throat> because they are finding hurts and faults with the people that's in the fellowship with them, but you don't see any new fruit, is because we are spending more time talking to those who are just like we are. Doing, all right, all right. Doing absolutely nothing for growth, but yet we're, we're finding fault with each other. God knows I pray to God I never get like that. All I want to do is Amen. give you the word. Right. Come on now. Because right. uh, I don't want to, I, I want some joy. <laughs> I, I, I want to see God move in the house. You, you understand? <clears throat> when he start moving in the house, that's a sign that he'll move in the street. Yes. 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 Come on, somebody. If, 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 if we don't understand that, we are really in trouble. Amen? So we are going to have to make sure <clears throat> that everything we do, we are saying, Lord, where do I go today? Who do I talk to today? Even if you're going on the job, of course, you're not talking on the man's time when he's paying you. Come on now. <clears throat> you want to be honest and true. But you want to say, Lord, who do I talk to today on my lunch hour, on my break? When I get off, where am I going? Or is all of my time wrapped up in me and what I want? Well, I'm going to say amen in the house. Amen? <clears throat> Folks, we have got to get it together. We are in another year now. And what is it, 20 what? 2020. 2020. Every church, every house, congregation ought to be mushrooming so much that if you are looking for a house to go to where the Lord is, everybody in the neighborhood ought to know where it is. But you can be a few blocks away from a church and you can ask somebody, where is such and such a church? And they say, well, I don't know. Why? Because nobody is out there talking, not even carrying your name. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And so all of these things are examples 
and, and something for us to look at, telling us to get back to the plain of God and to hear his voice. Because that's what it's all about. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So we are going to have to make sure that we do that. Would you, would you uh, take us a little further, please? Paul got glorified in his labors because it was the preaching of the gospel message which had its basis in Christ. Uh -huh. To the Galatians, he wrote, quote, God forbid that I would glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did anybody hear that? Did any, what, did, what did she just read that you're going to glory in what? You're going to glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have no right to glory in yourself. So I don't care how good your plane is, even if it worked halfway, you have no right to glory because it is still God that's doing the work in the hearts of men. So if we <clears throat> begin to try to glory any other way other than the cross, we are stepping out of line. And we are making the things of our making more than that of Christ. So this is, this is an, an amazing thing that we're going to have to understand that we have got to get ourselves in line with him so that we can glory in him. Amen. 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 This is, this is so important. This is so important that we began to hold on to what we got. All we got to do is start calling on him and saying, Lord, what do I do? Which way do I go? And I, you'll be surprised what the Lord will say to us. He will get us in line with himself. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Wow. Time's going by so fast. Amen. All right. Uh, where are we are now? Second paragraph. Second paragraph. Oh, great. Would you go further, please? The apostle was careful to give the credit to the one to whom it belongs. Oh, did y'all hear that? Giving the credit to who? The one in whom it belongs. Folks, this is the reason why we should make him number one in our lives. Because when he is number one, he's going to lead and guide you in the way that you should go by his spirit. If we're trying to do it our way, OK, suffer. Because he didn't tell you to do it that way. Amen? All right, go further. Note that the expression Christ wrought to me, this is a con commentary upon the proper position of the Christian worker. Yes. Christ is the actual worker, and the servant is the instrument through whom Christ accomplishes his purposes. Did y'all hear that? Then we see that Christ is the worker. We are supposed to be carrying Christ wherever we go. We don't carry our church where we go. Come on, somebody. We're supposed to be carrying Christ. There's a whole lot of us trying to make our church, our congregation, name great. There's a lot of us trying to make our name great. 
there's a lot of us trying to make the program we have great. We want to make everything great so it will turn to us rather than to make him great. Well, if you, even if you don't, he's already great. <laughs> Come on, somebody. We, we're going to have to understand that when he's leading, we cannot fail. I said, we cannot fail when he's leading. When we lead, we got problems everywhere. Are you all hearing that? We got problems everywhere because of the fact that God is there to do the work. It is not us. Are you all hearing that? This is the key. So what are we going to do with a message like this? What are we going to do? Are we going to continue to go to work and go home and go to, go to Corral? Huh? Is that the way we're going to do it? And then when we get some free time, what are we going to do? We, we ought to be seeking him. But we're going to find something else, somewhere else we need to go. Come on, come on, let's, let's be honest. Let's be true. Wherever you are working the word of Christ, wherever you are working the word and <clears throat> following what the Lord has told you, he will not let you down. We've been here for years. Come on, you know that because you, you were here for a good while yourself, right? Amen. And look at the people that have left here building all the congregations. I mean, doing great work. We got some of them right around here in the city that been to our schools that we had, learn well, and they are growing. Come on now, why? Because they are trying to work the word, letting Christ lead. And so this is just so important for us that we take a hold of it. <clears throat> you can get so comfortable in the little success you did have, you lose everything. And then you look and you say, well, Lord, what happened to us? Well, we stopped doing the work. The plane of God is foolproof. It will not fail. If, 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 if Christ is named anywhere, <clears throat> If you're not working the words of Christ, you'll see exactly where you are. And so I don't want to rush through this book of Romans. I want to make sure that we begin to get the message somehow that we can say now, thank you, Lord. You're true to your word. But we can't tell the Lord that he's true to his word until we work it. We got to work the word. <clears throat> and so we find everything in the world to do other than working the word. And so it's, a, it's such an amazing thing until... Uh, we don't realize that the kingdom of God is here. <clears throat> In English, we say the kingdom is at hand. You better shut up. The kingdom is here. The king is here. 
The Spirit of God is here. <clears throat> I, I was uh, listening to another preacher <clears throat> just the other day, and he said, you already got it. So you keep on looking for the Lord uh, and things of God. You already got it. And I said, brother, you're just as right as you can be. Once you come to the Lord, uh, you got salvation. You got what it takes. You, you, all you got to do is work what you got. I'm working it too. I'm working. Amen. Amen. And it shows too. God is, God is working. It's no way in the world you can work what God say and things don't get better. No way in the world. Amen? All right, give us a, a little bit more, please. Such a relationship leaves no room for personal pride. And yet therein is the place for great confidence and glorifying in the Christ who does the work. Yes, it's Christ who does the work. But now, like Paul said, Christ in me, the hope glory. of glory. Would y'all say that again? What? Christ in me is the hope of glory. So if you want to do something, at least let Christ come out of you. Don't be holding him inside. Yes, yes. Pa Pass that along to her. There she is. Um, just a short um, sentence. Yes. Christ has no hands but our hands Come on now. to do his work for him. Yes. You know, we don't glorify by, in ourselves by saying, you know, well, you know how people can um, compliment you on something that you have done. Yes. But a, a lot of people will say, thank you, uh, but it's Christ yeah. that is doing it. Yeah. And so I give God the glory. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Amen. That's good. Uh, I, I pray to God you all are hearing uh, what is being said here. But, folks, uh, we need to uh, talk to God about this matter. Amen. Uh, just before you come, uh, we are off, I hope. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Yeshua, Lord, you know exactly where we are. We have to be honest and true to you because you know everything. You know exactly how much we are doing towards the kingdom of God. And you know, O oh gracious God, even the very essence of our being, what we are thinking about for our next day. Lord, we ask that you will help us to make you a part of our next day so that we will be working the word of God for the kingdom that you will have more and more people in your kingdom. Help us to be fruitful. Help us to understand, O oh gracious God, that no matter how we are doing, God, we know that you can help us to do better. And so, gracious God, forgive us for our times that we have spent doing for ourselves and nothing really for the kingdom. God, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, speak to us. Speak to the rest of the congregation. We pray this in Yeshua's name. If you all agree, say amen. Hallelujah. Will you come, brother?